Hey YouTubers and welcome back to another episode here on ESGN Net of the Dallas Cowboys franchise here on Madden 18 and this is the Cowboys Insider, the actual final episode of the Cowboys Insider. So, should you take a look here, we're looking at here, we're taking a quick review of Super Bowl 53 where the Dallas Cowboys took on the Pittsburgh Steelers and what a game it was. Talk about a game of the ages here. For these Cowboys, a definitely type of game the Cowboy fans I think would all love and really enjoyed as the Cowboys were able to get this victory here in this game here today. And today we're just trying to kind of look at some highlights of this game here and kind of just get my final thoughts of this series and what uh, this team, um, for the most part, has been well, we've what I've expected and what I've was hoping to expect and what I've uh, at some point here would like to see them go on to do. Um, so we'll go ahead and talk about the game here. It was a good game, uh, really, truly. I mean, the defense really did a great job there of uh, playing some solid defense, putting some pressure on Ben Roethlisberger, and not to mention uh, just be able to just get in there on the plays like they had, like they needed to, to do the damage they need to put on Roethlisberger. Of course, keeping um, Antonio Brown in check. Uh, he was pretty much a no-show in this game. But, of course, we got the ball to... Uh, Jason Witten, uh, po possibly his final time being with us. Uh, also, Cole Beasley, uh, he had a great game. He had a couple of catches. Uh, actually, yeah, six, six great catches there, one of them being a touchdown. Um, Des Bryant had three great catches, also a touchdown. Um, and just for the most part, I was just really impressed, especially with the running game. Uh, Zeke Elliott had over 130 yards in the game. Uh, he had a uh, touchdown, a couple broken tackles. So did Raymond Bird. He had uh, over 50 yards in the game and uh, had a really good run there. We just had a really good two-headed monster uh, to go. Uh, McFadden, we tried to get him going, but he just had a rough go there. Um, and uh, just uh, he had a fumble that uh, was towards the end of the game, which you'll see here uh, a little later on here in the highlights here. But take a look there, 15-1 and one for the season. And, uh, pretty much on that run there after week, I believe it was six, six or seven there after the Jaguars defeated us there in that close game. And since then, pretty much on a roll there. Uh, as for the Steelers, having a kind of an up-down season, uh, they had one tie there uh, towards the uh, mid part of the season. Uh, but for the most part here, Ben Roethlisberger playing as Ben Roethlisberger, especially when it comes to playoff times here, and of course defeating of all teams defeating the Patriots in the AFC Championship game was a big deal there. Uh, I believe they won that in a high scoring game. I think it was like a 42-45 to like 42-44, uh, something like that. It was a close game. Um, so, I mean, a really good AFC Championship game there. Uh, but for us, I mean, if you take a look here at the, the video here, we did a great job there. Put some pressure on the defense, really stopping Bell in the back uh, field there. Making him lose yardage there, and at some point there, as you see there, Bell did get knocked out of the game there pretty early, uh, and that's what helped us pretty much there. Sean Lee uh, really put the you know put the pads on uh, Bell and really rung his bell there to, to you know say a pun there, uh, but for the most part there we did a great job there defensively. We stopped them when we needed to, put the heavy hits there on the third down so they can uh, you know drop the ball um, and just. Get in their way, uh, and that was really great for us. Now, offensively here, uh, a little bit of a slow start here. Uh, as you see, we're starting off on the, our own 26 here. Uh, but for the most part, Dak just did a great job there reading the defense there. Uh, I believe he only had one INT in this game, uh, but he had three touchdowns here, and, and just a really good run to pass balance here in, the, in this game. Uh, if you guys take a look at it already, there's a, there's a link down below. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet of the full game, you guys can check that out uh, if you want to see the actual game and how it came all about. Uh, then also, of course, I'll leave a link somewhere in here, somewhere in the eye, maybe somewhere uh, in that too for also the uh, the previous episode uh, of that game, uh, the, the regular edited episode. But for the most part here, we did a great job here marching down the field here, uh, getting the passes that we needed, getting that just that yardage there in that mid-range. Uh, 
I believe if the scouting reports say that we were could throw deep if we needed to, um, and uh, we took a couple chances there, but uh, we didn't really do too much. We wanted to keep just a intermediate game, kind of wind down the clock some, eat uh, eat some of the clock up, and just really have that all, that uh, defense of the Steelers stay out there. Uh, there are veteran defense. There's quite a few veteran players out there. Uh, but I think we did a great job of doing that and keeping our offense on the field as, uh, as much as we possibly could there. And that was uh, really really key for us there on the offensive side of the ball there to really just wear down their defense and just uh, utilize our guys. Just like here, as you see uh, Dak, or, yeah, Dak giving that one to um, Dez there for, and getting that one inside the five there. So we're just three yards out here of the uh, red zone here. Again, try to get our first touchdown here in this first quarter as we see third and goal and we'll see a pass there a bullet pass there to des Bryant who gets that one and that'll be the first and only touchdown he'll get for the day here as uh, we just could not get to, to him really uh when it came to the receiving here uh they just kept a really close eye on him and just watched uh we just could not get to him he was just not um just defensively they just did a great job there throwing to our main guy and uh, trying to get him, um, you know, uh, trying to find some mismatches there. And there was a few there, but just could not get him in the end zone too often there. And, of course, uh, like I said, he finished the game with only three receptions, 27 yards there. So Dez wasn't really utilized as much as I really wanted him to be or he would, or necessarily he should be. I know a lot of you guys uh, in the past and in, in the series here have been talking about, uh, you know, hey, you know, why haven't you uh, – you know, started, uh, you know, why you don't throw dad to Dez that often, whatever. But, you know, I try to. I try to throw as much as I possibly can to him, but uh, it's it's tough. Uh, he They keep a good eye on him, uh, and I try to have him go, uh, you know, some slant routes there, and uh, sometimes that doesn't always work because I always usually th overthrow, or in that case right here, as you see there, trying to throw to, um, to uh, Witten there. Uh, that kind of happens there. So I'm really trying to just really trying to minimize the, the interceptions here. I don't want to have an interception part with Des, uh, with uh, Dak uh, Prescott here. As, uh, you know, we just want to keep the game and, and just have him manage the game as much as possible here. Uh, as he's still just trying to learn and still trying to grow here as a quarterback here. I know I hear enough cowboy jokes now already. But for the most part, I, th I think this was just a really good Super Bowl for us. And we did a great job there. You see a nice catch from our one of our tight ends there who just did a great job there. And I will have to tip our hat and, and say uh, our tight ends did a great job there. And for next year, I, I think that's something we're going to have to grow. We're going we're gonna to have to get them involved. we have to get Swim and, and Hannah and more involved in the game, especially if we can re-sign uh, both of those two uh, as they are up for um, – they have contract renewals here, so we'll have to try to see if we can uh, try to get one, try to get one of them or both of them. Uh, I would like to try to keep both of them, but uh, you know, just with the money and whatnot, we'll have to see uh, what's best. And I know both guys want to be the number two guy. Uh, it's just gonna have to come down to uh, who is willing to, um, you know, overall, you know, the you know the overall numbers and uh, the overalls and stuff like that. Will they come up with uh, with the final? Um, numbers and, and, and XP for the season. We'll see how we can move, uh, see those guys, how they'll do there and whatnot. And also, too, just with a with a playing scheme that we're trying to run with. I think um, since this is going to be the last series or the last episode or uh, whatnot of uh, this series, um, you know, I, I'm going to try to talk the way I would if this series was continue, you know, continue on to the third season. And with that being said, I think in some ways we would, I would try to uh, make it a more, um, I, I was thinking of making it a more of a tight end, uh, tight end type of, uh, of scheme where we have more tight end sets and just that would really help us out. You know, we were looking at the draft. Uh, we have a couple of tight ends that we are looking on the board there. Uh, but the thing is about that is they fall uh, too much in the, uh, in the second and third rounds. Which we only have, you know, of course, we have two, two third round picks, but we only have one second round pick. Uh, so the odds of those guys coming uh, into our hand, lap, you know, our, our hands or our laps, you could say, uh, it's pretty abysmal. So, uh, you know, that's something that we're going to have to try to work on. Maybe we can try to draft up uh, or maybe, you know, 
or you know try to work with some kind of deals or something like that. But um, I with you know with the, I think next year you know, with this seat with this team, uh, I know for sure with when it comes to receiving, I know we're gonna re- uh, Williams is gonna stick around, of course. Witten is kind of a question mark. We don't know really if he's gonna be around. Uh, if he's not around, then Hannah, you know, with Hannah and Swim, they both gonna be our guys there. It's just the question is who's gonna be number one, who's gonna be number two. Um, but if Jason does happen to stay, uh, then the, then we'll have the, for that number, that who is gonna be number two. Uh, it's gonna be a big uh, big issue uh, for those two guys, and I don't see uh, Hannah really uh, wanting to stick stick around and be the number three guy. Uh, with that, with the ball club, because he has, does have he does have number two tight end talent there uh, for uh, for a ball club. It's, unfortunately, just it's you know it's not ours. But we'll have to see how the uh, XP is and with uh, with the final uh, you know upgrades with a lot of the guys here on the team. We'll have to see and how the, see how that works out and and uh, see if we can. Uh, and of course, budget wise, see in our budget what we can afford and who we can afford and who's the best option for us. Um, but I know uh, we are going to go ahead, at least with the ins- with some of the insiders of the um, within the organization said that there's a good chance that Cole Beasley will not make a return next season uh, as he may not, uh, there's a good chance that he may not get a con- uh, be given a contract renewal um, there for the re- in the receiving area. Uh, I know uh, as for rushing, uh, Zeke Elliott and Bird are both going to be sticking around. As for McFadden, it's a question mark. Um, the Dallas is really thinking about possibly going just to a two-back uh, system um, because this year was kind of a, not necessarily a fail experiment because we have to say McFadden did step up quite a bit, uh, especially when Zeke Elliott was uh, out for those uh, what, four weeks or so because of injury. Uh, he did a great job there, helping us out as the number two back. Uh, but Bird really, really, really uh, showed off what he could do there as the number two back. And I mean, honestly, if we didn't have Zeke Elliott, you know, if Zeke Elliott would have to go back down again, as you see there, a big run from him, as you see here in the highlight here. Uh, Bird, I think, really could just be, he could actually be a real uh, potential threat uh, to be a number, um, you know, number one guy uh, to Zeke Elliott there. So. Um, yeah, I think Zeke knows that, uh, and I, I'm pretty sure I know he's gonna be. He's got uh, he's gotten some strength, and he's I, I believe at least talking to him there in the after the game or a couple days after the game. Uh, he's talking to some uh, strength and conditioning coaches uh, for his own personal use. Uh, it's not um, not a team or anything like that from the team or whatnot, but uh, to work on his strength and, and just be more uh, durable. Uh, more, you know, just more of a losing back uh, coming up in this next season. You know. um, so he just, and, you know, he knows that Bird is knocking on the door there to be the next guy that uh, that gets uh, called up. And, uh, you know, halfbacks are kind of those, it's that one position there that is, it changes as a revolving door every two or three years. Um, and you got to, if you want to stick around to be the top guy there in that position, especially for the Cowboys, uh, you have to be uh, ready and, and ready to go there uh, at a moment's notice. And I think Bird has been really doing a good job there. You see there, he shows his uh, punt return here. And he then makes a great return here. All he has to do is just bre- uh, get that around that one uh, defender there. I believe that's uh, Mitchell. Mike Mitchell there, the uh, free safety for the uh, Steelers there. Uh, he did a great uh, did a great return there, but just could not get around that guy. And really, had yeah, Mitchell and I believe the kicker just to get around, and that would have been a you know a, a you know a punt return for six points there. But great field position here, just to see the highlight here, and that's that was one of the key things here. in this one is we just got some really good field position here. Uh, defense did a great job there, ste- you know, stepping up in there, and then you see the off. Oh, just this is the interception I was, I was talking about about uh, Prescott here. I'm not gonna hold that against him. That was just a freak pay. I mean, just a great job there of Burns just staying right there on top of the play uh, and keeping up with the uh, the bounce and just a volley, you know, just just a bouncy ball there on that one. And he just stayed with it. He was able to keep it hit. But there you see Wyatt Nischik. This kid, I'm telling you guys, I'm so glad we were able to pick him up in the sixth round because he has been stepping up here, especially putting him in a couple of different packages here. I think I mentioned this several times in 
um, <clears throat> in this series. This kid has just been doing a great job there in that position, and just uh, just showing what he you know what he can do there is uh, you know and just try to become a, a future um, star uh, for this ball club here on the defensive there and the linebacker position there. Um, I know he, you know, he's going to be uh, trying to compete for. Uh, there's a good chance he may move to the right side next year. Uh, as this year he's on the left hand side, uh, but yeah, because uh, we need some youth there in the right hand side, as you know, Sean, um, Sean Lee and and Justin Durant there are getting older, and we need that. Uh, we need some young blood in there, and that's something we're going to be looking at. And when it comes to the uh, draft here. Um, as a, we there, and unfortunately, there's not a, a high, high ticket, high end um, linebackers here in this draft. Uh, and I know uh, I apologize, we haven't been f showing you guys the draft boards and stuff like that here on, on this uh, series. Um, just with the you know timing of just uh, the series and how long it's been taking us to get this stuff done, and and now since you know Madden, of course, uh, 19's out, and we're already got started with that uh, next franchise there. Uh, which you'll see here pretty soon. I'll announce that here in a future video of uh, when this Chargers series is going to start. Um, you know, it's just, it, he's just a player that I think that I just, I, I fell in love with here uh, a lot. And, um, you know, he could be one of those guys that we could bring him in, in the next franchise there to continue on his career. And, um, you know, we can bring him over to in the Chargers and, just uh, you know, set up the same uh, setup for him and for that in that game, and get him going there. So we'll we'll see how things go. But I mean, just really and truly, this series has been uh, with him and on def defensive there. That just getting that pick there in the sixth round, just finding him there. That was just to me like a just you know not a you know a low what is that low uh, like a low seventies uh, pick there or low overall. Yeah, I think it's low. I think his overall was like a low 70 or something like that. Um, and it, it, to, me, to me, I think that was a diamond in the rough. I think this is one of those guys that is just, he's going to be very impressive. He's going to, he's proven why he should have been drafted higher. Um, and I'm glad that we were able to find him on the board there late um, in the draft there. So uh, he's been really stepping up for us and doing a great job. And uh, I'm hoping, uh, you know, if the series will continue, I think I we could see him be doing a lot of crazy and awesome things, just doing a good job there, reading the quarterback. Uh, defensively and uh, just putting a, just putting a hurting on uh, a lot of the guys that come up the middle there, uh, receivers and, and, and even the running st run stopping. You know the run stopping for him was just, was great too. He had a good uh, couple of uh, games there. Um, I think it was the Giants game or so. I think he had a really good hit on uh, the backs there. So it was just a he's just a great pickup there. And I think uh, we're you know like I said we're continuing this series here. Uh, he would just be somebody that we just can build from, and uh, he would definitely be our future there when it comes to uh, the right-hand um, outside linebacker position there. Uh, take a look here. 17 nothing here. You see a great day here, especially for Cole Beasley, going back to the receiving here again. Uh, Cole Beasley, I was really impressed here. You know, he, Normally he has like two or three drops in this game. I think he may have one in this game total, but for the most part here, when it comes to the red zone here, he was just on cue. Uh, he was in there. He got the great catches that we needed him to get. Uh, take a look here. I believe this is a tight end. No, uh, tight end set that we have, and we had to set aside just go change it up here, and we're gonna go ahead and run this one there. It says Ezek uh, gets in there again. So he's getting close to 100 yards now uh, at this point in the game here. And, and Pittsburgh still, you know, they're still scoreless here, and we're already mid halfway through the third quarter here. As we'll see a pass play here, that's good. just another nice catch there from the veteran Jason Witten doing his thing there in the red zone as he's always have, and uh, he continues doing that. And that's the big question right there for us: is what is Jason uh, Witten's future? Is he going to stick stick around for another season, or is he going to uh, call it quits? And you know, it, kind of a quiet season for him, not like it was in the first year of this franchise. Because, uh, you know, his numbers did kind of uh, regress some in some areas there. Uh, I think we had a couple. Of, there was a couple of bad g games that we just couldn't get to him. Uh, and it was just because I think really true. It was just great coverage there from the opposing team's defense. Uh, really, you know, uh, getting in his way and just really having him uh, have a bad day. 
Uh, but this year, you know, uh, not like the, you know, the first season on this. Uh, second season here with the Cowboys was kind of just tough for him and uh, for this offense and stuff like that. Uh, you know, of course, we had uh, we had some issues with um, the pass, pass blocking uh, was a problem. And, of course, the, then it came the run blocking, and then we had lost Zeke. And then, uh, you know, we started bouncing, you know, Run blocking started getting a little bit better. Pass blocking at, at times it was kind of shaky, um, you know. And, and like I said, we've you know won you know um, every game but the one against uh, the Jaguars there. But you know there were some struggles there. We defense I would say would probably was give us more issues there this year, um, as we, there was a lot of close games here, and you know that could have been um, not just me but also on the sliders part, which I'm. I'm kind of glad for it but at the same time um you know we had a there were some uh new updates on this you know on the game there towards the end there uh for whatever reason and so we had to change some of the sliders around and just um you know i was really hoping the slider set that i had was going to be a little more competitive and at times it was other times against other teams uh it just kind of seemed like it just the game was just not doing it was what i was trying to set up to do which was really um, make it uh, more challenging uh, and with the new uh, new game already out already I've kind of tested a lot of sliders here and you'll see in some of these you know, these first couple episodes um, um, that we have a pretty good slider set I really think think believe I think we have a good slider set. I've, I've combined a lot of different sliders from uh, previous uh, see you know previous games uh, and then it kind of implements some new stuff uh, for for this game, for this year's game, and from others uh, that in the community that have, have used in, in their own uh, series. Um, so you'll see a slight change in some. Uh, we'll see more closer games, which is why that's why I really want. I want it to be a really comes down to a possession, um, and and just you know have some, um, especially against teams that are are closely in. Uh, you know overall rankings and stuff like that so um i feel like i wasn't getting that here too often i mean towards the end here uh especially the eagles game that was just a fun game to play there in in philly uh that was a really fun game to play and i'm that's the kind i was looking for this season i was really looking for at least half the games um if not a third of the you know a third or so of the games were going to be that way didn't seem to be like that at times um, but I don't know. Uh, let me know down below what you guys think of the season was uh, when it comes to sliders like that. Uh, if there's any slider sets you guys think I should use, that'll be fun. Um, you know, both get going. You know, playing against the, CP against the CPU. Uh, but at the same time, you know, not nothing where we're scoring. Um, yeah, I don't want to score. You know, too many. Like, I mean, if we're scoring, you know, f you know, more than 35 points a game, I'm hoping that the CPU is doing the same. Um, you know, give me a, t you know, give me a, have, give me a tough time on defense, uh, or, you know, have my defense out there and give me a hard time of giant stop and stuff like that. Uh, but I really want the games to be close. I want them to be like 24, 17, you know, 21, you know, 21, 20, something like that. You know, just something close, something not past 35 really. And I think with the slider set that, uh, like I said, for this, uh, Madden 19, I think that's something. Uh, that I think I found, and I'm gonna be tweaking them from here and there, uh, just to you know make sure that uh, you know until I find that just that f perfect um, or somewhat perfect um, sweet spot there uh, for the games and stuff like that. But you take a look there, yeah, there's a fumble right there, and we're able to recover that one. And it was towards the end of the game here, you know, they were getting a little Steelers were getting really aggressive there. You see Hargrove just comes in and just bulldoze. Uh, Prescott there, and that was just a brutal hit. That I thought right there, I'm like, oh, this might be it. We might have to have Kaepernick come in and and, and take over the reins. Um, now speaking of that, uh, Kaepernick uh, and taking over the reins, he, I, I will say this was that was a pretty much a failed experiment. Uh, what I was wanting to try to do with Kaepernick in this game, not saying Kaepernick was horrible. There was a lot. There were some times that he had some shining, you know, some good shining moments there. Um, but trying to uh, some of a kind of a semi two quarterback system, uh, but with only a certain play set and, and certain at times that he would come up on the field. Uh, really, it was 
kind of of the uh, like somewhere around the um, midfield, kind of uh, around the third, around the 40, 30 yard line up to you get to at least to the red zone there. Um, not an experiment that I, I am proud of, and uh, I really thought that would be something that it would be you know um, kind of uh, interesting and trying to get try to do something different. Um, but he will be on the team next year again. He, I believe, he has a, a one more year on his contract with us. Um, and you know, I really, truly, you know, the next thing I would do probably after you know going into week or see year three uh, is to really start looking, maybe looking at a, a, a at a guy that not necessarily be the future quarterback, but the future backup for uh, Prescott there. Um, so. Uh, I know in this draft that we have right now, I can tell you now that the quarterbacks are not the greatest. So I'm hoping, uh, you know, my thought would, was that maybe in season three, we will look at a quarterback, uh, kind of get away from the defense some. I mean, even though we do have some areas in the defense that we still need to address, uh, you know, the next thing was going to be the secondaries, you know, the free safeties and, and strong safeties there. Because uh, the linebackers, you know, we're only going to mess around with those for so long. Um, the defensive line was great, with the exception of maybe uh, trying to maybe find a D -ta decent, you know, guy, a decent D tackle that can swim through there and just uh, just upset the timing there uh, for the quarterback. Because uh, uh, really, true, the D the linebackers swarming around, you know, on zones and stuff like that. I think this year it was a better, big upgrade and big improvement. Um, and there was because there were some really good times there that they just were right on top of the ball when it comes to the passing. Um, but uh, yeah, quarterback, you know, finding a decent backup quarterback to help us out would, would be great. Get some, just try to get some depth uh, in that position. Um, and then, you know, just really, really, truly, just in the third, this third year, I was really looking at some depth, uh, really at the offensive line. Because uh, I know there's some areas in the offensive line that we have holes in, especially the run. Uh, Pass blocking and run blocking, there are some areas that we need to really focus in on because uh, there was at times too that you know uh, that Dak had a good you know he snapped the ball and it had a good look and everything, but they the line would just give up too easily and they would just let the uh, defender come in there and, and get a hold of him and then we just, you know we had to run the you know kind of do a bootleg out or scramble and stuff like that and Dak he's he's capable of that he's he's totally I'm totally fine. With, doing something like that with him and whatnot um no problem there we've done it in the past and everything uh, as you see there uh fumble there from our halfback uh, our veteran there uh, mcfadden but um yeah i was wanting to do something that we could really um help us out and and just um get us to um you know just to be just more solid on the line just get some depth in the line because we got some great guys there uh, I know one player that we probably won't get back next season because he is just too expensive. Looking at uh, some of the expenses there for him next year, and I believe that's Zach Martin uh, for us. I believe he's our, least, our, our right or left guard there. Uh, we'll have more about that in the next video because uh, after this, uh, this will be the final um, Cowboys Insider video, but we'll show you guys what I was going to do. Uh, when it came to uh, going to season three, so we'll still have two more episodes, at least two more episodes uh, of uh, the Dallas Cowboys franchise here on the channel um, before we uh, get to uh, Madden 19, which we got a couple episodes already online here, ready to go for you guys. But we kind of just want to rack, get just do a proper, uh, you know, send off on this this series, and before we jump into the next one. Um, but yeah, Zach, uh, by the looks of it, we won't be able to re-sign him. And uh, we'll show you, like I said, I'll show you guys that in that in that video. Uh, but for the most, uh, you know, we're going to have to look at some depth here. I think we're going to go to uh, to uh, you know, a younger aspect of the game. Uh, so we're going to look at maybe look at the running game or look at the, um, oh, what do you call it? The, uh, um, the you know, uh not the running game, but the blocking game there. Look at the receivers there, or the, uh, not receivers, the, the offensive linemen uh, when it comes to guards. Uh, I know uh, that there's some couple guys there that just, this year just gave up too many sacks. 
uh, that was really unnecessary, and I they're like I have it in my head right now. I have, I have a or at least on some notes here. I wrote down some things, but I cannot find those notes there. Uh, but there's a couple of players there we probably were not going to resign. Uh, Chaz Green is one of the guys there. He just development wise, he has not uh, been making it up yet. Uh, if by chance, if we can't find, um, you know, if it looks financially, if we cannot keep Zach uh, or Martin there, uh, then or Green may be sticking around for just for depth reasons. Um, you know, he's familiar with the playbook. Uh, he's, you know, he's a familiar face on the team and. Um, so, you know, we'll have him stick around at least for another year uh, until we can, you know, draft, um, look at, you know, other potential guys to come in that following year to take over. Or uh, if there's anything on the free market, uh, free agency there. So we'll, there's just some options there we can look at and try um, to see what is better for us uh, and, 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 uh, and to go on with this franchise here. So, um, but, you know. Uh, a couple guys, we do have. I, I will say we have a. I in that video, I'll let you guys know. You'll see uh, who we re-signed and who we didn't, and uh, of course, give you reasons why, or at least the thinking of uh, why we didn't want them there or why we wanted them there. But there you see the Cowboys. They are bringing home another championship. They are back-to-back -back champions, and uh, the city of Big D, Dallas, will be uh, celebrating here as they bring home another championship. So second straight year. Dallas wins the Super Bowl, um, and apparently it's two years in a row in Minnesota. Uh, for whatever reason, the game glitched. Uh, I, th I believe the game, the Super Bowl. I think this is this, this Super Bowl would be this this upcoming Super Bowl in real life, uh, which would be in Atlanta. And for some reason, we're not playing Atlanta. We're playing in uh, Minnesota again. So um, <laughs> at a U.S. Bank there, but yeah, uh, the Cowboys win it again here. And uh, a classic, not much of a classic, you know, a true classic Steelers Cowboys game, but uh, nonetheless, we just uh, did a great job of just put a good thumping on them and showing why we're the dominant team uh, that we were this year. Uh, I believe uh, there you see Ella, uh, uh, Elliot, your player of the game, uh, 23 carries, 141 yards, uh, one rushing touchdown, three broken tackles in the game. So. Congrats to the Cowboys there as they're now two-time Super Bowl champs. And, of course, uh, you know, the question is, can we do it again? Can we be a three-peat? And uh, we'll never know that question because the series is, unfortunately, going to have to come to an end now. So, Cowboys, uh, go on there. You see Jalen Smith. Uh, one of our, I will definitely say, our big, big part of this year's defense there. I would say he's definitely our player, the, our MVP for the defense this year because uh, he's shown up in a lot of, you know, huge times there, really on the field. Pretty, pretty much a presence in every single episode uh, there defensively for us. Uh, but take a look at the numbers there. Uh, Dak Prescott, 25 of 34, 73% uh, of his passes were completed, 288 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, three sacks. Uh, ben Roethlisberger, 11 of 21, 52% of his passes were completed. Uh, they see only. Um, 95 yards is in this whole game there, so just a really bad game there from Big Ben. And uh, like I said, we just we put the pressure on him. We uh, we had him. Um, you know, he wasn't sacked that often in the game. Uh, but when we did, were, you know, we just it was just a good game. It was just good pressure defense putting on the quarterback there and really forced him to throw the ball when he didn't want to, and uh, just take you know, those opportunities and just really getting a quick one, one, you know, quick uh, one, two, three there um, when it comes to the offense there of the Steelers. Um, as for running, uh, 120, or 141 yards, three, 23 carries and one rushing touchdown for Zeke Elliott. Eight carries, uh, 55 yards and a broken tackle for Bird. As for Jason Witten, eight receptions, 64 yards, one touchdown. Cole Beasley, six receptions, 72 yards, one touchdown. And uh, Des Bryant, three receptions, 27 yards, one touchdown in the game. Take a look at some of the other numbers there. You guys can pause the video, check those out. Uh, and then uh, take a look at your sacks there. Uh, you see Collins there gives up two. And there you see Zach Martin gives up. Oh, he allowed a sack there. Uh, and the only person getting pancake tackles was uh, Smith there for the Cowboys. But... Uh, defensively, uh, that's where we really did our job there. Def defense just did a great job. Uh, as uh, Brian Jones, five tackles, tackle for loss. Uh, 
Um, we're Demarcus Lawrence, uh, two tackles, uh, half a sack. Um, Wyatt Nischek, four tackles, a sack, and a forced fumble. Uh, Taco Charleston, four tackles, three sacks. Um, and, of course, uh, Nolan Carroll also had uh, four tackles and a sack in his game there, too. So take a look at the numbers there as we uh, wrap this up here. And uh, for the most part here, like I said, it was just a, you know, a great way to end the series. Um, you know, I, I mean, I'll be honest, really true. I thought the game was going to be a lot closer than when it was. Um, but for whatever reason, um, and um, I don't know, it just, it just seemed, I mean, we were just, it was just our game. Uh, we were right on top of everything and putting Ben to the test and um, just changing different schemes there. And we did a great job. So uh, we were able to do what we could do. And um, that's what helped us win the game. So nice job there from uh, the uh, Dallas Cowboys. And, uh, of course, we can tip our hats there to the Steelers as they had a great successful year and did a great job there. And, um, unfortunately, um, you know, couldn't get – couldn't get it, you know, to, uh, you know, couldn't bring home this, uh, the Lombardi Trophy because I believe that would have been there. Um, I think they would have the most. I think they currently have the most so far with six, uh, but they would have their seventh uh, there. So, uh, but uh, take a look at some of the league news there. Just some of the things that everybody's talking about there uh, around the league. Talking about the Super Bowl win for us. And, of course, um, you know, uh, of course, some draft stories there you'll see here in just a bit there of what uh we can do um some suggestions there for the draft coming up uh, we'll show you guys we'll talk about the draft we'll look at uh overall we've got two videos we have the first part uh which is going to be the re-signing of uh, some players and of course we're going to make a, we're not going to make a big splash in the uh, in the um off season when it comes to free agencies signing free agents um i n at least talking to coach uh, and Jerry Jones there, they say that maybe one or two signings uh, or, or two or three sign signings they may possibly go after. But uh, really and truly, I looked at when doing the videos, I will let you guys know. Uh, there's not too many big names for free agency. So free agency is not going to be a big, huge issue. Uh, there are some big names, but not, um, you know, names that we're not really like as like for, for Drew Brees. We're not going to go after Drew Brees. He's going to. Um, not he's not gonna go back to this uh, or at least he's gonna be a free agent uh, for the Saints uh, there as you take a look at the box score here um, so yeah I mean uh, there's some big names there I'll show you guys those names but uh, when it comes I mean there's there was, wasn't a, a bunch of names like oh we can get him we can get him we can get him it's like oh, okay we could we could get him for depth but yeah for depth yeah maybe not for us but maybe for another team um, so I will say that, but, uh, we'll get to that video here. It'll be up here with the next uh, day or two here on the channel. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoy the video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the series. Uh, if you guys, any of you guys have any suggestions for, um, for, well, for, you know, um, anything here on the channel, uh, or anything for the next for the next series coming up, which will be the, uh, Los Angeles chargers. Uh, let me know down below. I always love to read you guys comments and you, and what you have to say and, and your and input um so thank you guys so much for watching uh but that is it for this is it for the final uh, cowboys insider uh episode 45 it's been a fun series and i cannot wait but uh we'll stay tuned for the next two videos we'll, we're not just done yet with the cowboys yet we'll look at their what they're going to do for for, uh, for re-signing free agents in part one and in part two we'll show you guys the draft a quick look at the draft and who we drafted uh because like i said this season we're going to try to go young as we don't have too much when it comes to uh, finances there. Uh, kind of went big on uh, signing different, lot of different people this season and uh, re-signing a lot of guys there. So it paid off because we won the Super Bowl. And uh, so now we'll see what we can do now for Season 3. So thank you guys for watching. And as always, keep yourselves each other healthy. Uh, stay tuned for more Dallas Cowboys franchise here on the channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Discord. Links are down, on, down below in the description. Uh, also, um, uh, oh yeah, uh, check us out on Discord. Uh, check us out there for latest news and events on what's going on here on the channel and what's going on in the world of sports gaming. Same thing on Twitter. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us. So thank you guys so much for watching. And again, as always, keep yourselves healthy, and I will see you guys 
next time.